Hello, this is a video to help show you how to set up and add I.O. on our trainers. Um, the biggest issue that we have is typically in industry, you have admin rights or you have some way of changing your computer's uh, IP address so that you can network things through, through um, network things through the a, a small internet or something like this. Um, it is a, it, it's a good problem to have. It's, it, but what we have found is since we are in a school institution, we cannot change our IP address. So, um, so for instance, if I run, if I go into windows and type in a command prompt, okay. If I put in IP config, IP config, it's going to show me everything here, you know, a lot of fun stuff. Um, but this is my, my computer's IP address. And this is a subnet mask. So I pretend 136.91.196. Because the subnet mask is the way it is, I can't communicate with anything that doesn't have a subnet, uh, uh, this octal here of 88 or between 88 and 95. So if I have a PLC that's out of the box, that maybe is 192.168.1 something, I won't be able to communicate with it via Ethernet. But the nice thing is um, through RS links, I can communicate with stuff through USB. And so if I plug into my USB, here is my new out-of-the-box PLC, 192.168.1.7. I can change that to my new subnet mask, or I can keep it the way it is. In our case, because I'm a lazy instructor, I want to make sure everyone matches their own thing. We're going to keep it where it is for the time being. But I want to show you how you can access um, point IO and distributed IO through the Ethernet, through the Ethernet port, uh, uh, through communicating via USB and how to set that up. Um, because right now, but you may see, well, nothing is showing up, okay? What you will need to do is basically turn your PLC into a bridge, and oftentimes it's already defaults to that, but what I do is I can just right-click on Ethernet and go to Properties. And this will allow me to search for any IP address through the USB that's connected to the PLC by Ethernet. So what I'm going to do is just gonna go down to the bottom, hold down Shift, highlight everything and add it to the side okay and then i'm gonna hit apply and hit okay and i give it a second to browse and browse and browse and browse and hopefully i set this up right i should have um you will find a point io showing up eventually let me close this collapse this keep this searching and you can see it's searching right here. And there it finally showed up. Um, and if I expand this, and you can see all my point IO, any device net that's there, um, it's it, everything is there. Now, when you first get this out of the box, for some of the other reasons, you might need to right click on this and upload the EDS from the file. That's electronic data sheet. For us though, it should already be set up. If it's if it's not recognized, it'll show up as a yellow question mark and you won't be able to go in and determine what the ethernet adapter um, properties are. So if it's running 5.0 5.0 or other various types of um, input output, configurations uh, so this is how you would add that so you can find it and this helps me find it so this is my I, I know that this is the IP address for my Ethernet IP uh, for my uh, point IO so so right now just to clarify I'm connected by a USB to the USB port of the processor and I'm allowing the processor to communicate on the network to the point IO but I've set it up to find the point IO so I can do some programming. 
So that's first because I need to know what the the um, IP address of the point IO is. So now I'm going to go into Studio 5000 and I'm going to create a new program. So I'm going to show you how to create a new program from scratch and add all of this. And we need this because this will show us what our hardware is that's out there. So here's Studio. I need to create a new project. I need to first go into RS Links, right click on the processor, and do uh, device properties, and you'll see I'm running revision 23. This is important because I need to make sure that I'm utilizing revision 23. Um, I also need to know I'm running a L36 ERM, so I find that, and look, it's right here. I give it a name, test initial setup, hit next, and now it's going to ask me what revision. On this computer, I have 21 or 23. Well, I'm going to do 23 and do no protection because that will be best in the classroom. So hit finish, and it will create um, a new project. Now, if you're able to communicate by Ethernet, you don't have to do these extra steps for, the, for making this into a bridge. But since we don't have the ability to change our IP address and to change things, we have to do it this way at our institution. So, just so now you can see that it's loaded. I kind of pause it because it takes a little bit to load. But notice, though, I have nothing under my I.O. configuration. For me to do any programming, I need to have hardware there under the I.O. configuration. So first things first, I need to go in and right click on the, on the 79 bus. That is the back plane for all intents and purposes. Hit click on new module. And then on, I can either go to RS links and look on RS. Well, in this case, it's not going to show me. I can look at the compact bus and it will show me it's a uh, 1769 24 volt I can go in hit device properties and um, look at what I'm trying to do so once but it's not going to give me everything I need it might be easier just to read it off of the uh, read it off of the uh, um, the input card itself for some of these hard things I just happen to know it's a 1679 dot dot uh, dash uh, IQ6, and look, this is what shows up. So I hit click on that, hit create, and I can give it a name. I won't. I'm just going to go ahead, and since this is compatible keying, I don't have to worry about it being exact uh, revision and everything. I hit OK, hit Create. There's an analog card, too, but I'm not going to worry about the analog card, so I'm going to close this. And now here's where the fun begins. So now here's my Ethernet connection to the processor. Moving forward, I need to always ask, how am I connected to the processor? This input card is connected by a backplane, so that's how I added it by the 1769 bus. But since I'm trying to add stuff by Ethernet, I have to go in, right click, and hit click on new modules. And the first thing I need to add is the network adapter on my point IO. This just happens to be the ANET Ethernet adapter. I hit create. At this point, I need to make sure that I A, enter in the IP address correctly. So enter in my IP address correctly and make sure I enter in the right chassis size. I may not have all six slots filled, but it may think that there's six slots there. So I go. I can go here, private network, since it's all 169.168.1. And in this case, this was, you might, yours might be two. This is whatever the thumb wheel says on the side, two. Um, so if, in my case, mine says 94. Um, so I will put in a 94, and here I know I'm running 5.1, but this is saying my chassis size is a 1. Well, I need to change that. If I go here, click change, 
I can change my revision type, but then I can also change my chassis size to six and hit OK. And that just says yes or give you some warnings. I hit OK. Oh, I got to give it a name. I usually use ANET for classroom purposes. And now look, if you look here on the side, it says point IO six slot chassis. Am I done? Not quite, because now I have to right click on the chassis and add my input cards and output cards. So right click on the chassis, on the point IO six slot chassis, new module, and now I can put in my input cards. And I've done this so many times, I know what they are off the top of my head. In this case, it's an IB8 syncing input module. Hit create, and I'll hit OK. And now if I do OB4E, hit create, I've now entered in my inputs and outputs. So I'll close this, and now since I have my, my input card, my input output card on my bus, my input output card on my Ethernet, I can establish my communication pathway. And I can do this one of two ways. I can either do it by virtual backplane or USB. I usually use a virtual backplane um, and just highlight the processor. And then I can download this new hardware configuration and go online. So download, download, but I need to set a, a, uh, a communication path up here by clicking on uh, RS who's or who's active. I hit remote run, OK, and you'll notice right here, it should read IO OK. It, if your IP address is wrong or something's not right, I'll say IO not responding. And if I want to check, I can go into controller tags, and here's all my pre-made controller tags. And I can open up my local one, data one, and I can monitor my tags as I, as I do some buttons. And see, you can see that local one I data zero turned to a one. That's turning to a one. If I, if I want to, I can go to my outputs and test my outputs by changing this to a one. And if, if it sounds good, you may have heard the click in the back because those are turning on my outputs. And if I had a video, you can actually see the lights go on and off. Now for my input side, this would be, there's one or two ways to get to it. I always go to the, the ethernet adapter, slot one, input, and then I find my inputs, if I push a button, well, you'll see where my mouse was. It goes from a one to zero, one to zero, so it's, I'm having communication. But it's the address for those bits are AENT colon one colon I dot zero. You can also go in through here, my inputs. The thing is you gotta go in through the data and slot when it's this one, this array one here, it's saying slot one, and you'll notice it's also changing at that location too. So you're, you could, in theory, use two different input types or uh, input uh, addresses based upon what the default addressing is. Now for my outputs, I gotta go to slot two, and if I click on, you will see, if you were here and it's my lights are turning on, looks, it will show you lights that are flickering on, and you can test to see what your outputs are. Okay, I always set those back, but this is a way to check to make sure I have communication. And once again, you can go down to uh, data, you know, I A N I T O data two because this is slot two, and do the same thing if you wanted to. Okay, but that there you have it. That's how you have some basic communication when you can't change your Ethernet address and doing com do, doing some basic communications through USB. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.